Hi there, friends. It's me, Mrs. Darcy McGuire, your writing imagineer and mouse expert. So I'm bringing to you a story today that's one of my favorites. It actually it won an award, a very special award called the Caldecott Award, and it's called Marshmallow. And it is a book by Claire Turley Newberry. And it's a really sweet book about a cute little bunny who makes friends with a very unlikely character. So let's read Marshmallow. Marshmallow. And you can see this book used to belong to my little girl. Her name is in it. Well, it still belongs to her, but we haven't read it together in a while because she's a big big teenager now. So this is Marshmallow. <clears throat> One of my favorites. Oliver was a cat of middle age, gray with tabby markings. He was a bachelor without wife or kittens and lived in an apartment in Manhattan. So I wonder who might be able to possibly make a connection. I know some of you said it. And um, think about where Manhattan is. Anyone? Yes, New York City. Manhattan is right in the heart of New York City. So that's the setting of this story. And here's, here's Oliver the cat. He's an interesting looking fellow, isn't he? A housekeeper, Miss Tilly, who had been with him since kittenhood, looked after the place and prepared his meals. Many a cat has to catch his dinner before he can eat it, but Oliver was lucky. When he was hungry, all he had to do was mention the fact to Miss Tilly, and she would open the refrigerator and get out his liver or chopped beef. Now listen to the author using sensory details there, talking about the food that Oliver enjoyed. So when you use sensory details, again, it's how an author helps you, the reader or listener, to connect, talking about what we see or hear or smell or taste or feel, either physically or emotionally. So listen for the sensory details in this story. Peace and quiet was what he wanted. And there's Oliver. He just wants peace and quiet. That's all he wants. There he is laying there. But that's about to change. Because this little guy is coming into his life. <laughs> Let's read. As Oliver never went out, he did not know that the world was full of other animals. How could he? When he had never met any of them, socially or otherwise, the only mice in his life were the gray flannelette ones filled with catnip that he received at Christmas, and the nearest thing to a rabbit he had ever seen was a stuffed plush Easter bunny that had been given to Miss Chili with a box of candy. Oh, you may be able to make another little connection because we just had that holiday of Easter. Some of us celebrate that holiday. Some people don't. Some people do. I do. But Oliver did not care. Peace and quiet was what he wanted and his meals on time. Life, however, cannot always be like that. One day, Miss Tilly called him from the kitchenette. Kitty, kitty, she called. Come here, I have a surprise for you. Prow, replied Oliver. And he hurried into the kitchenette, expecting to find dinner served in its usual place under the sink. But it wasn't dinner this time. Miss Tilly really did have a surprise for him. And we know the surprise. What do you think Oliver's going to do? Let's see. She was smiling at something she held in her two cupped hands. It was small and white and furry. And look, there he is. Look at cute little Marshmallow. He's such a cute little bunny. What do you think of this, Oliver? She said, 
Its name is Marshmallow. She held the furry thing to her cheek for a moment, as though it were very, very nice indeed. Then she set it on the floor. It had tall ears, pink eyes, a wiggly nose, and twitchy whiskers. And to Oliver's dismay, it was alive. Oliver was appalled. He took one wild look at the creature, then squinched his eyes tight shut, as if he couldn't bear the sight of it. Oliver, what is the matter with you? cried Miss Tilly. Don't tell me you're afraid of a little tiny baby bunny. But Oliver was afraid. He was too frightened even to run away, but crouched in a corner of the kitchenette, opening and closing his eyes as if it actually hurt them to look at the rabbit. As for Marshmallow, he paid no attention to anybody. He was a very unhappy little bunny. All he wanted was to be home again with his nice, warm, furry mother. If he had been a kitten, he would have meowed. If he had been a puppy, he would have howled. And if he had been a baby, he would have cried his eyes out. But being a bunny, he just sat still and felt sad. Oh, look at Marshmallow. He's just missing his mama. And then here's Oliver. Oliver's like, what? What is this little crazy animal that Miss Tilly brought home? However, he cheered up a bit when he had his dinner. A raw carrot with its green top and a bowl of rolled oats. Dry, not cooked the way people like them. The bowl said D-O-G on it for the shop where Miss Tilly had bought marshmallow. It did not have any dishes with R-A-B-B-I-T or B-U-N-N-Y on them. But as Marshmallow could not read, this did not much matter to him. He ate the green carrot top first, for he was thirsty. Then he munched part of the carrot. After that, he tried the rolled oats, eating with quick little nibbles. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And with his front paws in the dish. And when he had finished eating, he hopped into the bowl and took a nap. Now here's Marshmallow with his bowl that says D-O-G because remember the pet store did not have any bowls that said R-A-B-B-I-T for rabbits or B-U-N-N-Y for bunny. And then look, after he ate, he hopped in the bowl and he took a nap. He went to sleepies. Isn't that so cute? I think that's so funny. And if you know anything about figurative language at all, there's a lot of onomatopoeia in here. The onomatopoeia is a really fun word that just means that words are spelled the way they sound. So you've got crunch, 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 and there's a few more in the story you can listen for. That night, Marshmallow slept in the bathroom. Miss Tilly made him a bed out of a folded towel so he would be comfortable. But it was not the same as having a soft furry mother to cuddle against. Still, he did not cry. Nor did he yowl for his breakfast the next morning. If only you were nice and quiet like that, Oliver, yawned Miss Tilly when Oliver woke her as he always did with frantic scratchings and meowings at her bedroom door. He was even earlier than usual this morning because he was so excited over having a new animal in the house. And here's Oliver waiting patiently for his breakfast. Or I should say impatiently. He woke Miss Tilly right up. Miss Tilly warmed some chopped beef for him, gave Marshmallow another carrot, and made herself some coffee and toast. Then she sat down at her typewriter and wrote. Now, girls and boys, a typewriter is what people used to use before they had computers. So a typewriter has all the keys on the keyboard, but you would feed paper into the top and you would type what you wanted and then it would come out on a piece of paper. It wasn't like a laptop or a computer with a printer. And she wrote a poem. Miss Tilly was a poet. So here's a poem that she wrote. And there's Marshmallow. The poem is about Marshmallow. And this is actually very appropriate because right now it is April. And April is National Poetry Month. So this is really appropriate. So if, if you were in the writing lab with me, I would have you echo this or say it after me. So if you're at home and you want to echo, you're welcome to do so. If not, you can just sit and listen. It's a very lovely poem. A poem in praise of rabbits. A bunny is a quiet pet. A bunny is the best thing yet. A bunny never makes a sound. A bunny's nice to have around. 
Puppies whimper, bark, and growl. Kittens meow and tomcats yowl. Birdies twitter, chirp, and tweet. Moo cows moo and lambkins bleat. Some creatures bellow, others bray. Some hoot or honk or yap or neigh. Most creatures make annoying noises. Even little girls and boyses. A bunny that was never heard. He simply never says a word. A bunny's a delightful habit. No home's complete without a rabbit. So that's Miss Tilly's little poem there about Marshmallow. So she really enjoys having him as a pet. And obviously he's inspiration for her literary endeavors or for her writings that she likes to put down on paper. That morning Oliver felt much better. He hardly squinched his eyes at all when he looked at the bunny now. And by afternoon, he was watching Marshmallow with an expression that would have frozen the blood of an older and wiser rabbit. And here's Oliver with his expression. Look at that expression. He's like, hey. Marshmallow, however, was a very young rabbit. So young that he scarcely noticed what went on around him. He was like a little tiny new baby that cannot yet focus its eyes. He ate when he was hungry and the rest of the time he slept with his paws tucked up under him to keep them warm. And there he is. Marshmallow. He certainly didn't act very dangerous and presently Oliver grew bolder. He began creeping toward the sleeping bunny, his eyes glaring wickedly. But just as he lashed his tail and got ready to spring, Miss Tilly cried, Oliver, don't you dare hurt that bunny. Oliver sat up, blinked innocently as if to say, why, Miss Tilly, what an idea. I wouldn't dream of such a thing. But Miss Tilly was not so sure. This just isn't going to work out, she told herself sadly. Cats always have hunted rabbits, and I suppose they always will. So she put Oliver in the other room, and after that, she did not let him come near Marshmallow. Soon, Marshmallow began to notice more, just as any baby does as it grows up. He went lolloping around the apartment, sniffing things and then tasting them, and nearly everything seemed to taste pretty good. He nibbled the rugs, working very hard in one place until he had gnawed a little bare spot before moving on. He stood on his hind legs and yanked books out of the bookcase. And here he is on his hind legs. How funny is that? Look at, look at Marshmallow up on his hind legs like that. So cute. He chewed the chair and table legs, and every time Miss Tilly sat down for a moment, he came hopping up cheerfully to untie her shoelaces. He was a very busy little bunny. Marshmallow was the only live rabbit Miss Tilly had ever known personally, and she was surprised to find that he nibbled so many things, besides carrots. She wrote another poem on her typewriter, which she called a solemn warning to rabbit lovers. A bunny nibbles all day long. A bunny doesn't think it's wrong. He nibbles mittens, mufflers, mops. Oh, look, there's some alliteration there for all my older readers and listeners who know about figurative language. Alliteration is when you have the same beginning sound over and over. So in this line, mittens, mufflers, mops, you hear the same sound of M, right, exactly. He nibbles mittens, mufflers, mops. He only pauses when he hops. He nibbles curtains, lamp cord, shoes. He only stops to take a snooze. Sofa, pillows, ribbons, rugs. He takes a mouthful, then he tugs. Galoshes, boxes, books, and string. A bunny nibbles everything. And there's Marshmallow nibbling. There's the back of him lolloping away after he nibbles something or pulls something off the shelf or unties Miss Tilly's shoelaces, perhaps. Funny. Whenever Miss Tilly went out, she left the two animals in separate rooms, for she did not trust Oliver. 
One afternoon, she stayed out later than usual, and when Oliver woke from his nap, there was no dinner waiting for him under the sink. He thought he'd better remind her about it, so he trotted to the door of the other room and said, There was no answer. But he could hear odd sounds in the next room, small scuffling noises that caused his eyes to widen and his ears to point suddenly forward. These sounds were made by Marshmallow's little feet as he went lippity, lippity, lippity around the room, skidding every now and then on the hardwood floor. There's some more alliteration there, right? He had eaten all of, uh, not alliteration, excuse me, onomatopoeia. Lippity, 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 that's a word that sounds the way it's spelled. Alliteration is when you have the same beginning sound. Well, I guess since they're saying lippity, lippity over and over, it could be considered alliteration too. So there you go. There's another connection. He had eaten all the carrot he wanted and quite a lot of new magazine that Miss Tilly had carelessly left on the floor when she went out. And he had discovered her old plush Easter bunny on the sofa. Uh-oh. And had thoroughly nibbled its whiskers. Look at Marshmallow and the plush Easter bunny. How adorable is that? Marshmallow is a very curious little bunny, isn't he? Oh my goodness. Cute little guy. Now he was just frolicking around the room, skidding merrily on the smooth floor and kicking up his heels for sheer joy of being alive. On the other side of the door, Oliver was listening and sniffing and sniffing and listening while his eyes grew bigger and bigger. Look, there's Oliver. Oliver's like, what is going on in there? I hear noise, but I don't know what it is. He's about to find out, huh? Prar, he said again and scratched impatiently at the door. When this did no good, he stood up on his hind legs and patted the doorknob. Finally, he reached up with both forepaws and with one on each side of the knob, he worked this way and that. And at last there was a small click and the door swung ajar and Oliver padded silently into the next room. Can you imagine? Do you think if you had a cat or a dog or a pet, they could get on their hind legs and figure out how to open the door? I don't know. My Marky Mark's too small to get up and open a door. He's too little. But somehow Oliver got himself up and he, he got up there. And there was that rabbit skipping about as if he hadn't a care in the world. He didn't see Oliver come in, but went on playing a little game he had just at that moment invented. He would dash several feet in one direction, stop suddenly and spring into the air, and then he would turn dash back to his starting point and jump again, back and forth, back and forth. It was a very pretty sight. Oliver watched it with great interest. Each time the little rabbit whisked by him, he lashed his tail and got ready to spring. But somehow he couldn't quite make up his mind to do it. Perhaps he remembered that Miss Tilly had told him not to hurt the bunny, or perhaps he was still just a little bit afraid. Suddenly Marshmallow sat up tall and stared at the cat. His soft nose twitching rapidly. He looked most inquisitive, but not in the least bit alarmed. What was this great striped animal, he wondered? Could it possibly be his mother in a new fur coat? And look, there's Marshmallow on his hind legs, trying to figure out what the heck Oliver was. And he's thinking, maybe it's my mother. And while Oliver hesitated, trying to make up his mind to pounce, all at once, Marshmallow scampered joyfully up to him and kissed him on the nose. Oliver flinched and drew back aghast. Then curiosity overcame his fear and he sniffed the bunny eagerly. Marshmallow shut his eyes and snuggled close, blissfully happy to have a have found another furry animal. If this were not his mother, it must at least be a very near relation. And there they are, snuggling up. I don't know about you, but I think little animals like to snuggle. I know my Marky Mark does. Right, Marky Mark? Come here, bud. Come here. Come on up. Say hi to the kids. Come on up. This is our Marky Mark. He's my little doggy. He kind of looks like a marshmallow too, doesn't he? He's fluffy and white and he looks and he likes to snuggle too. <laughs> he really does, right? Good boy. Okay, thank you. So that's my connection. 
So now Marshmallow and Oliver are friends. There's Marshmallow again. Even when Oliver opened his jaws and took hold of him with his teeth, Marshmallow was not afraid. He lay quite still, and the next moment Oliver had let go and was licking his face as tenderly as any mother cat with her kitten. And like any mother cat, he licked the fur in the wrong direction so that it stood on end and looked all mussed up. But Marshmallow did not mind. He was so happy to have a mother's care at last. When Miss Tilly got home, she found them asleep on the floor. Oliver's head resting upon Marshmallow as though he were a little white fur pillow. After that, she let them play together every day, for she saw that they were friends. They romped like two little kittens, and wherever the cat went, Marshmallow followed. Lippity, lippity, right at his heels. And whenever Oliver lay down to take a nap... The bunny cuddled up to him as close as he could get. He could scarcely have loved Oliver more if he had been his mother. And look, there they are snuggling. There's Oliver and Marshmallow snuggling. So sweet. So sweet. Oliver forgot that he had ever thought of Marshmallow as a strange animal to be pounced upon. He adopted the little bunny and brought him up as his own kitten, often scrubbing him so thoroughly that his fur stood on end for hours. And although Oliver never said so, I cannot help thinking that in time he came to agree with Miss Tilly that a bunny's a delightful habit, no home's complete without a rabbit. Brighten your home with a bunny. He's fat, he's frisky, he's funny. He's soft, he's downy, he's cute, he's clowny. Oh, brighten your home with a bunny. Lippity, lippity, lippity. And there they are again, Marshmallow and Oliver. So sweet. The end. So I hope you enjoyed this little reading of Marshmallow, once again by Claire Turley Newberry. It's one of my springtime favorites, and it was nice to spend this time with you girls and boys. Have a magical evening. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you real soon.